Welcome back. Um, so let's take a look at some time series. So here's your first time series. Um, so you'll have seen lots of these things on the news at the moment. So it's a chart that plots a particular quantity over time. So we can see here we've got um, a weekly number of outpatient appointments. Um, so these, each of these figures is recorded on a weekly basis. We can see that it runs from 2014 through to sometime in 2018. Uh, on the x-axis, on, on the y-axis, we've got the number of uh, appointments that are occurring. Um, and we can see when we look at this that there are potentially patterns within the data. So in particular, we can see around winter there's a big, there's a big dip and that appears to occur, occur every year. So that's useful information that some form of quantitative method can use to project this time series into the future. Um, and there may be other signals within this data that aren't easy to see by eye. Um, that we would use some tools to, to uh, some quantitative tools to pull out that information and build that into a forecast. So that was weekly level data, but of course you can look at these things at all different levels. So here we've got uh, the number of calls in the southwest that resulted in one or more ambulances being dispatched to an incident. And you can see you could look at that at the daily level the weekly level, the monthly or the yearly and the patterns within the time series change slightly depending on how you look at it. And what you should be able to see is that as we progress from the daily through to yearly, the seasonality, the seasonal patterns or the periodical patterns within the data start to disappear. Um, so we can see in the daily level there's clearly some daily level effects. Um, and when we move to weekly, we can still see some of that, but the signal perhaps isn't quite as clear. That then disappears when we go to the monthly level, but we do have monthly seasonality in there still. But when we get to yearly, we, ev we effectively just have trend only within the data. So um, the scale is a little bit deceiving here, but there is some slight trend within this data. So we might assume that yearly data uh, would be fairly straightforward to well, you could use fairly straightforward methods to forecast that. Whereas forecasting at the daily level, um, where you've got daily level effects, might be much more complicated. And of course, you can go to a much higher level of, um, of granularity if you'd like to. You could go to the hourly, the minute, or the second level, depending on the time series that you're working with. So time series data has some special characteristics um, that are slightly different from from normal cross-sectional data that you might use. So obvious ones are trend, seasonality. So how does the, how does the um, series uh, rise and fall periodically through the, um, over time? What does its mean? What is its variance? Sometimes the mean is referred to as its level within, within the literature. Um, for time series forecasting, um, that effectively means the data is moving up and down at different times. But then there's some, some complicated um, concepts called stationarity and autocorrelation. Um, so these really, so stationarity um, is, is an odd one, but really it means if I looked at that time series, if I randomly took a chunk out of that time series and looked at it um, at any point within that time series, um, I wouldn't be able to tell um, it from a different chunk that I'd taken out. So if it, if it looked very different, that would mean that the data is not stationary. Um, and that causes some significant challenges for statistical methods to forecast it. The second one, autocorrelation, just means that um, the number of newspaper sales on a Friday is related to the number of newspaper sales on a Thursday, which in turn is related to the number of newspaper sales on a Wednesday. Um, so there's some sort of um, correlation within the data, but it's, but it's over time. Um, and again, that is a challenge, both in terms of interpreting um, what is happening within the data, but also it poses challenges for the methods you need to use to accurately model that data.